So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recycle an older lecture that I did okay in. Uh, it turned out I I didn't always post on Facebook, so these you won't. I mean, you know, not Facebook on um, on YouTube. I I posted these originally on Canvas, and before that we had Blackboard. So um, unfortunately, though, these are old enough. The quality is a little bit off, uh, but. Um, I think they should work. So this is the first slide, and then from here on out, you'll see the old slides. That just basically, I I was going to modify, but I basically just reformatted since I'm reusing uh, the old lectures and cleaned them up so they didn't have color in the background and stuff, which makes it a little bit easier on the printing uh, if you guys are printing these out. I'm going to be going over naming a coordination compound. The coordination compound is a compound which contains at least one complex ion. Well, when you do the nomenclature, it's very much like the IUPAC nomenclature you learned in Chem 1A. Uh, you name uh, the cation first, and then you name the anion. Uh, there will be some other things that are a little bit different because not only do you, on the cations and anions, do you have things like, you know, a cation could be sodium, but it could also be an iron uh, 3 ion with ammonia attached to it. And so we have to learn how to do that nomenclature. Um, but again, you know, sodium sulfate, you name sodium first and you name sulfate uh, the anion second. Now, when you have a complex ion, uh, you'll have ligands attached to the metal. And just as a brief introduction, those ligands will be it should be in alphabetical order. Um, anionic, anionic ligands will end in the letter O, so chloride would be chloro, uh, bromide would be bromo. Uh, ammonia will have a different name, and we'll look at those names here in a little bit. Um, but uh, you'll have to uh, learn those, or at least know how to find them when you do the take-home test. So. Uh, the other thing to, to note is that when you have multiple ligands, uh, you'll have to use prefixes like mono, di, tri, tetra. Now, some ligands actually have di in the name, like ethylene diamine. I mentioned that in class. Um, when you have two ethylene diamine uh, molecules as ligands, or four, or, or actually three, uh, you'd have to say bis for two, so bis diethylene uh, diamine to avoid the confusion of where the ligand name is and where the prefix is. Um, the other thing to know is the metal in the cation just gets the metal name. If the metal is a cation, the metal just gets its name, so iron 3. Uh, but if the metal is in an anion, then it would be fair 8 because it would have a negative charge. So we'll uh, work this uh, complex ion out. This is tetraamine platinum to tetrachlorocuprate. And the ion, it's cuprate would be, again, this is the cation. This is the anion. And we'll go ahead and break this up and figure out what the uh, complex ions look like. So. For the platinum, PT, it's a 2 plus ion. It has tetra, which means 4, and amine is what you use for the name of um, ammonia. So it would be NH3, 4. Now, the NH3 has no charge, so the charge on this is zero. The platinum has a two plus charge, so there's a two plus charge overall in this complex ion. The tetrachlorocuprate, uh, again, you'll notice this chloride becomes chloro because it's a negative uh, um, ligand, negatively charged ligand. So cuprate is copper. Um, that's one. this one here. So we have copper. And then we have four, again, four chlorides. 
Now, the chlorides have a minus one charge each. The copper has a two plus charge. So overall, this is a two minus charge. This is the anion again. So the coordination compound, you put brackets around it like this. That's the formula for the complex ion. And then the coordination compound would be written as PT NH3, 4. And then you have a 2 and a 2. So just like you did in Chem 1A, uh, you would cross the charges. Or if they're the same, you put them together. CuCl4 brackets. And that would be the formula for that uh, coordination compound. Let's do another example. Now this part I made the same, uh, just so you don't have to overthink this. Let's just CuCl4 2 minus. Now hexamine chromium 3. So that's Cr3 uh, plus with 6 NH3s on it. That would be an octahedral. complex ion. Since the amines are negative, uh, are, are neutral, then overall this is a 3 plus. So to write the compound, you have a 3 plus and a 2 minus. So you're going to have to go CrNH36. Then you'll have a 2 down here. And then CuCl4. You'll have a 3 down here. And that's the formula for that complex ion. So hopefully you can see how you go from a name uh, to a complex ion and then to the compound. So again, the process is, so hopefully that made sense to you. In order to um, write the formulas, the coordination compounds, the first thing you have to do is name the complex ion or, or write the formulas of the complex ions. The charges, like these, are of the metal ions are given, so that's the metal ion charge, are given in the formula. You also have to take into account the charge of the ligands and the number of the ligands in order to figure out the charge of the complex uh, ion. And then the second thing you do is you just write it as cation anion. And then if the cation right, has a charge and the anion has a charge, let's say this is x and this is minus y, then you have to do y, x like this. You have to cross the charges. Well, if the charges are the same, then you just put it together to get the uh, formula. So let's go and look at how we would write the name from a formula. And this is a lot like uh, part of this is really a lot like figuring out um, what the charge or oxidation number is of a metal ion. So right now, this is how you have to think about this um, and give you an example with something you're familiar with. Let's say you had SO4 2 minus and you wanted to know the charge of the sulfur. So then you would say, well, the charge of the sulfur plus four times the minus two for the oxygen is equal to minus two. Well, uh, four times minus two, that's going to be minus six, or sorry, minus eight. And so that means in order to make this equal to minus two, sulfur has to be, add eight to both sides, you end up being plus six, okay? So we're going to do the same process with this. Um, but this is what we have, you have to be careful about doing. I know the charge of the cobalt, because that's what I'm trying to figure out, um, is going to be some variable number. And then I'm going to have the charge of the chloride. And so the chloride is um, minus 1. And then the charge of, in this has a couple of possible names, um, this ligand. It could be called a nitro or a nitrito. And then um, if you go to the slides what you'll find out is that there's two versions of the nitro 
uh, uh, NO2 minus group, but in either case, it's NO2 minus. So now what I can do is I'll go back to here. And so I have a minus one for the chlorine, uh, the chloride, plus a minus one for that nitro group. And then the ammonias are neutral. So it's plus four times zero. And the overall, that's equal to plus one. So now you can do the math, right? Uh, cobalt minus two equals minus one. So that means cobalt, or sorry, plus one. Cobalt has to be at two to both sides, plus three. That's actually the first step that you have to do in writing the name, uh, or one of the first steps you really should do in writing the name of the complex ion is figuring out one, what the charge of the metal is. Now the second thing that you'll do is find the names of the ligands. And again, there's that sheet that I just popped up earlier that you can look at. And then you just write it out. It's gonna be um, chloro for one ligand. And then I have, um, no, oh, sorry. I don't have enough room, so I'm just going to write it in order. Um, this is amine. We're going to assume if this is nitro. Uh, there is no other information given about uh, if it's nitro or nitrito. Nitro is connected through the nitrogen, and nitrito is connected through the oxygen to the metal. Um, but there's no reason to think it's one or the other, uh, at least as far as we, we know here. And this is going to be chloro. That's the one we looked at earlier. So this whole thing would have to be in alphabetical order. A comes before C comes before N. And then we're going to say tetra amine chloro nitro cobalt And I prefer the Roman numeral to be used. So in a nutshell, um, that's how you go through that process. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do another practice problem or two. Okay, so this is a coordination compound, but in this coordination compound, we only have um, one complex ion. These are ammoniums. And then we have to name this. Okay, so we're going to be going back to some of our slides so we can get a look up uh, the names of different complex ions, uh, the ligands, I mean, and then uh, we also uh, then need to figure out uh, what the charge of the iron is, too, as well. So here's one of the things that we know. We know that ammonium is plus one. So that means FeH2O F5 bracket, right? That has a charge of minus two or two minus. Okay, so we have that and then we can figure out the charge of the iron. So iron is going to be, the charge of water is zero plus five times minus one, that's equal to minus two. What does that give us, right? So now we have Fe minus five equals minus two. Add five to both sides. Charge of iron is three plus. Right. So now let's look up our ligands. H2O, right? You want to call it water or aqua or something like that. It's actually aqua, right? And fluoride is fluoro, so we have those two.
And so um, F and A, so the A will come first. So it will be aqua and then 5 would be penta. Fluoro, and then uh, iron, and so since it's a cation or the, an anion, uh, the complex ion is a negative charge, right? It's an anion. Then we have to say ferrate, and then you have to put the charge. Okay, and again, uh, we can skip up to here on this earlier slide and it shows that the name for iron in an anion would be ferrate. Let's do another practice problem. So in this problem uh, we actually I incorporate the use of a ligand. Okay so what we'd like to do uh, next is uh, do one, another example, and in this example I chose a ligand ethylene diamine, and you notice ethylene diamine has the prefix di in it, it actually has two NH2 uh, two groups on it, those are known as amine functional groups, um, but because it has two, when we call out the number of ethylene diamines, we have to use the prefix bis in front of it because there's two of them here. So first things first, what we're going to do is figure out the formula or the charge of our complex ion. The chlorine's minus one, so our complex ion must actually be this. With a positive one charge, because chloride has a minus one charge. The next thing to do is uh, you have to um, figure out the charge of the iron. So iron is equal to or plus 2 times minus 1 is equal to plus 1. So Fe, um, I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get rid of that. We'll end up being 3 plus. So that's the charge of our iron. So now we can name the complex ion. We have to name the ligands in alphabetical order. Ethylene diamine comes before fluoro. So what we're going to do, because E comes before F, we're going to write bis ethylene diamine difluoro. So that takes care of my ligands iron because not ferrate because it's uh, a cation and only name the metal as an anion if it's in a negatively charged complex ion three and then chloride like that. so hopefully that'll get you through that little nomenclature bit um, and uh, if you have questions uh, feel free to text me or uh, send me an email.